it's all right. Turn around to the third verse. be taking your Bibles and find Leviticus chapter number 1 this morning. The book of Leviticus chapter 1. We're located at 3015 Upper Peachtree Road, Murphy, North Carolina, 28906. If you're in the local area, come be with us. If you need a ride to church, 837-6891 is the number to dial, 837-6891. UpperPeachtreeBaptistChurch.com on the internet. If you'd like a CD of any of our services, Brother Johnny can accommodate that. He can burn you a CD. And also WCVP, WCNG, local radio station, Sunday morning at 8.30 on the Tri-State Baptist Hour. Tune in and be with us. I'll say while I'm doing, before we get too far into this, I appreciate the uh, senior uh, dinner yesterday down here at the community center. And boy, well, that was a good time. And there was some good vittles down there. That was some good food. Uh, so next year, if the Lord tarries and we live, and you get an opportunity to go to the Peachtree Community Building for the senior dinner, please come out for that because that is some really good food and fellowship. We had a good time down there yesterday. Leviticus chapter number 1, and beginning in verse number 1, the Bible says this, And the Lord called unto Moses, and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, he shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. I'm going to stop reading right there and we'll go on from there here in just a few minutes, Lord willing. But I'd like to speak this morning, Lord willing, on this subject, the Christmas offering. The Christmas offering, here it is, it's Christmas time and uh, I'm telling you, the world and the, and the devil is working overtime to muddy the waters and, and cloud what the real meaning of Christmas is. And uh, you know, the old heads had it right, that we're writing the, uh, these old Christmas carols from, from long ago. And one of my favorite ones is, is God rest ye merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay for Jesus Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day to free us all from Satan's power 
when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Don't miss this. The world would have you to believe that Christmas is totally different than something that it really is. It's nothing short of God in His great mercy, in His great love for us, sending His only begotten Son as a man to save us from our sins. Why? Because we could not save ourselves. And all the sacrifices in the Old Testament pointed to Jesus Christ coming. Amen. As the sacrifice once and for all for our sins. This idea that Christmas is all the who's down in Whoville. Or that Christmas is uh, a, a little fat man... Uh, with a big round belly that shakes when he laughs like a bowl full of jelly. and I mean, taking the, the holy things of God and twisting it and perverting it into something. Listen, I'm telling you, Jesus was born to die for our sins. Listen to what the, the Lord told Moses way back in Leviticus as we think about Christmas time and Jesus coming and being robed in the flesh of a man, listen, and God became flesh and dwelt among us. Listen at this. The Lord called to Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation. Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering, listen, of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. You see, man sinned. Adam sinned, and, and that sin was passed on all of us. Man sinned, so the sacrifice had to come as a man. It had to be one of the herd. It had to be one of the flock. But it couldn't be just any man. And uh, listen, these sacrifices uh, that they made in the Old Testament, they would offer up a bullock or they would offer up a lamb. But listen, according to God's requirement, it had to be a spotless lamb. It had to be one without blemish. Listen to what he said. Verse 3, If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer what? A male without blemish. Everything that, that came from the womb, the men that came from the womb, was separated wholly unto the Lord. It had to be a male without blemish. It had to be Jesus. He's the only one we just sang the song up here in the choir. Round yon virgin, mother and child. You should have a hard time uh, believing the virgin birth. You better believe it, brother. You better believe it, sister. Amen. If he was not born of a virgin, he's not the spotless lamb. He's not that lamb from the flock that's without blemish. If it, had, if it didn't have to be without blemish and any, any old thing was acceptable, then listen, you could just take somebody and offer them up as a human sacrifice, which is what the pagans did, which is what the people that worship Baal did, the people that worship Moloch and Ashtaroth. This is what they did. They just got any old person out there. Listen, uh, old wicked King Ahaz in the Old Testament. I just got done reading about him. Uh, he took his own children and offered them up as burnt sacrifices to the gods of the land. Him being the king of Judah. They, ooh, how'd that go over with the Lord? Not very good, I'm just telling you. It had to be the spotless lamb. I'm talking about the offering at Christmas. The, the Christmas offering was Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, when, when Mary, uh, you know, the, the angel came and, and told her about she was going to give birth, and she said, how can this be, seeing I know not a man? And he said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow thee. Amen. And she conceived and gave birth to the Lord Jesus Christ. 
And he was the spotless Lamb of God that went as a sheep dumb before the shears that went to the slaughter to die for our sins. And you want to take that and twist it and pervert it into some version of Christmas that ain't even close. Come on. Rocking around the Christmas tree. Come on. Have a holly jolly Christmas. Up on the housetop, click, click, click. Friend, I'm telling you, this is nothing short of God Himself laying down His life to save a sinner wretch like me. The offering, listen, they had to bring the offering to the tabernacle. See, the ark was in the tabernacle and we were studying about the ark this morning. And uh, uh, Brother Nathan, Brother Shorty, they just sang that song, Just a Closer Walk With Thee. And when they started singing that, I was thinking about my answer to one of the questions in the Sunday school lesson. Why did David want the ark brought back up to Jerusalem? First thing I wrote down was I said he just wanted to be closer to God. I believe he wanted a closer walk with the Lord. You want a closer walk with the Lord? Come to church. Amen. Amen. I can tell you this about Upper Peachtree Baptist Church. Whether it's the singing, whether it's the Sunday school teaching, whether it's the preaching, we are a King James Bible, praise God, believing, teaching, preaching church. And God forbid we'd ever be anything other than that. But you want to get closer to the Lord? Come to church. They brought the offering to the tabernacle. Let me tell you something. In that tabernacle, there was a veil. And that veil behind the Holy of Holies, that sacrifice would come and they would, they would flay that sacrifice there at the entrance to the tabernacle. And that, that sacrifice was burnt on the altar representing Christ Jesus giving His all to save us from our sins. Listen to what he said. Verse 1, The Lord called unto Moses and spake unto him, Where? Out of the tabernacle. Out of the tabernacle. You hear this? Of the congregation. Come on. There ain't nothing wrong with going to church. As long as you're going to a church where they preach Jesus. As long as you're going to a church where they preach this Bible straight as a gun barrel. Amen. Yeah, the devil's always going to try to stop that kind of thing too. Brother was talking about it this morning. Uh, but listen, I'll tell you what. The church, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. you know why? Because it's founded upon the rock. Amen. Yeah, amen. Listen, to, listen, speak to unto the children of Israel, saying to them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, you shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. Jesus came unto His own, His own received Him not. He came unto mankind. He created man. John chapter 2 said, He needed not that any should testify of man, because He knew man, and He knew what was in man. King David said, Thou seest my thoughts afar off. God knew what you were going to be thinking this morning before the mud seals of the world was in place. He's God. He searches the avenues of the heart. He tries the hearts, the reins of man. He's God. You ain't. And I ain't either. Amen. Listen, God loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross for our sin. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If He did all that for us, Regina, praise God. How much did God love us? And God has given the law to Moses here. And hear this picture of Christ Jesus, amen, at the door of the tabernacle. And I want you to go on, listen, go to verse 3. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He had to be a spotless lamb. He shall offer it, listen at this, of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Don't miss this. I can pray for you, but I can't pray for you. 
I can pray for you, but I can't get saved for you. I can't accept Jesus for you. I can accept that offering for myself voluntarily. God didn't make a bunch of robots and He didn't make people to be programmed. And I'll tell you this, this notion I heard somebody say here to me recently, said years ago, said they would go back in the pew and just grab somebody by the arm and say, come on and go to the altar. Uh, well, I, just, I love you this morning, but that's dead wrong. You've got, to, you've got to accept the offering of Christ Jesus for yourself voluntarily. There, there was a day out there when Jesus told His disciples, He said, Except a man eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, he cannot be my disciple. And they all left Him that day except for the twelve. And He looked at them twelve and He said, Will you leave me also? Jesus didn't go chasing them down. He didn't grab them by the arm and say, No, wait a minute. Come back up here. Come on back to the altar and let me pray with you. I was in a church service one time a few years ago, and I had preached the first night of the revival because the preacher couldn't get there, and the pastor called me, and he said, Can you, can you open the night in revival? And this girl got saved that night. Praise God. Yeah. But anyway... Uh, I went back the second night and everything. And uh, it was an altar prayer and everybody was coming to the altar and praying. And I went up there and I prayed and everything. And uh, I got done praying. And I went to stand up and that visiting evangelist put his hand on my shoulder and pushed me back down into the altar. That's been years ago. And I tell you, I still don't like that. It's voluntary. Amen? You, 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 don't force, you don't force Jesus on people. I'm not going to force Jesus on Jesus didn't force Himself on people. He came and He preached the gospel to them in love. Now it's up to them whether they choose to believe and whether they choose to accept that sacrifice at the door of the tabernacle, the Lord Jesus Christ, that Lamb that's spotless without blemish. It's there if you want to receive it. But if you turn it away, listen, praise God, there's consequences to that. But it'll be between you and God. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Listen, what's my job? My job is to preach this Bible. Amen. I sent Jason's preaching this morning down at Unica, and I sent him a text message this morning. I said, Brother, I just come out of the prayer room. I've been praying for you this morning. I said, Preach the word. Amen. Feed the flock. And I said, be strong and of good courage. Well, that's what our job is. We're to preach this Bible. Amen. And uh, with the Lord's help, that's what we'll do. But it has to be voluntary. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Listen to verse 4. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make an atonement for him. You've got to lay hold on Jesus yourself. If you lay hold on Jesus, praise God, Jimbo, you know what? You'll lay hold on eternal life. He is the life. You want to lay hold on eternal life? Lay hold on Jesus. They had to put their hand, Thomas, on that sacrifice. If I'm the one that's seeking the atonement, if I'm the one that's seeking forgiveness for my sin, I've got to lay hold on Jesus myself. You can't do it for me. Johnny Cash used to sing a song years ago. Said, "You got to walk this lonesome valley. You got to walk it by yourself. Ain't nobody here going to walk it for you." Well, I'll tell you, you ain't going to walk it by yourself. You're going to walk it with Jesus. Amen. If you're saved, if you're born again, but you've got to lay hold on that sacrifice yourself. You've got to take the Christmas present that God gave and receive it. You know, we're here at Christmas time. You know, families sit around the Christmas tree. If you still got family left, if they ain't all passed on and everything, and, and uh, they go to hand out gifts, and somebody comes up to you and they hand you a Christmas present, and they say, "Here, I want you to have that," and you accept that, and you say, "Well, thank you. I receive that. Thank you. I don't. I don't. I'm not going to be reaching in my billfold and say, "Here, let me pay you for it." Amen. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. 
not of works, lest any man should boast. This gift, this offering is given freely unto you. It's the only offering that's acceptable. He's without blemish, praise God. And you can bring that offering to the door of the tabernacle and listen, praise God. Even better than that, because of this offering, that veil of the temple was rent. And he opened up a way so that sinful Derek Tilly could have access to holy God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 5, And he shall kill the bullock before the Lord, and the priests, Aaron's son, shall bring the blood, listen, and sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I don't care how pretty you clean up on Sunday mornings. I don't care what kind of nice clothes you've got and what kind of car you drive and everything. If the blood has not been applied, you're lost, friend. Ours is a bloody faith, you understand me? These people that want to take the, uh, in these versions of the Bible, they want to take the blood out of the Bible. Oh, God help us, don't do that. Don't do that. Amen, the Christmas gift that was given for us, that Christmas offering that was given for us, amen, shed His blood. Amen, amen. in our place, to save us from our sins, we have to lay hold on that gift. We have to take hold of the Lord Jesus Christ and we have to accept that free gift voluntarily, amen, that makes an atonement for us. Look at verse 6. He shall flay the burnt offering and cut it into his pieces. And the sons of Aaron, the priest, shall put fire upon uh, the altar and lay the wood in order upon the fire. Abraham was out there one day in the plains of Mamre. God came to him and said, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and offer him on a mountain that I'll show you. He went up on Mount Moriah and Isaac looked at his daddy and he said, well, here's the wood and here's the fire, but where is the sacrifice? Abraham told Isaac, he said, God will provide himself a sacrifice. <laughs> Amen. And there was a ram caught in a thicket over there, Larry, by the horns of his head. Abraham went over there and he laid hold on that sacrifice. And that represented Christ Jesus. God provided Himself a sacrifice. And I believe it was the same mountain. I believe it was in the same spot. Now I might be wrong about that. But I believe it was in that same spot years later that they drove spike nails up in my Savior's hands and His feet and stood that cross up and his back bleeding and bloody and the blood ran down that cross to the foot of it. You want to know what Christmas is all about? Friend, that's what Christmas is about. God loved you enough to die for you. I'm talking about this sacrifice. Listen, the blood that was shed and he gave his all. They laid it all out there on the altar. And the priest, verse 8, Aaron's son shall lay the parts, the head and the fat in order in the wood that was in his own the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash with water and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice. Listen, you can't take part of Jesus. You can't take part of this here Bible and junk the rest of it. Amen. You'll take him all. <laughs> Amen. You'll take the Lord, you'll take all of Him, or you won't take anything at all. When we take communion every fifth Sunday, we take that bread. We take all of it. When we drink that cup, that represents the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, drink all of it. Take all of Christ Jesus. You say, well, you know, and I've had people even tell me this. They say, well, you, you don't need to preach on that. You, you need to stay away from that right there. Well, thank you. I'll take that under advisement. But I'm getting my orders from somewhere else. 
When I come in this pulpit, praise God, I've prayed and I've sought God and asked Him, Lord, what would you have me to preach? And He gives me that word right there to preach to you, to feed this flock the good word of God. He knows where, who is going to be here before the mud seals. The world was in place. He knew you'd be here this morning to hear this message. Listen, listen to me uh, today. Verse 9 or verse 10. And if his offering be of the flocks, namely of the sheep or of the goats for a burnt sacrifice, he shall bring it a male without blemish. Can I tell you, Jesus was born a male without blemish. The sinless Son of God. The virgin born Lamb of God. When, when Jesus began His earthly ministry, Linda, uh, He came walking down there to the Jordan River and John was down there baptizing in the Jordan River. The Bible says because there was much water there. Enon. You don't have to take... It don't take much water to sprinkle somebody. It takes much water for, to submerge them in Jesus. Amen. Jesus come walking across the hill and John looked at Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. You see these burnt sacrifices, they could atone for sin for a little while, but then guess what? They had to go back and offer something else. It was a foreshadowing. It was a foreshadowing of Jesus. And Jesus came at exactly the right time in history. He wasn't one minute early. He wasn't one minute late. He came exactly the right time. And these sacrifices in the Old Testament was prophesying about the Lord Jesus Christ coming. And those Old Testament saints, they were saved, listen, not by works, but by faith in the Messiah that was to come. Amen. Amen. Listen to what the Bible says, verse 11. He's a male without blemish. And he shall kill it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord. And the priest, Aaron's son, shall sprinkle his blood round about upon the altar. Aren't you glad that Jesus came and shed his blood one time, once and for all, to save us from our sins? Listen, I've got to hurry this morning. I was a little late getting started. But take, take your Bible and turn with me. Don't cut me off just yet, Johnny. We got a ways to go here. Don't 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 turn me off, brother. Luke chapter number one. Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. I'm gonna wait till the pages get done turning because I want you to look at this. Verse number 26, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin. You see this? Now, some versions of the Bible, they'll say a maid, a young woman, <laughs> negative to a virgin is spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, listen, of the house of David. It had to be from the tribe of Judah to fulfill the scripture. It had to be of the house of David. Listen at this. And the virgin's name was Mary. I'm talking about a spotless lamb. A lamb without blemish, praise God. To a virgin, listen to what he said. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Listen to this. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son. It's a male of the flock, of the herd. It's a male without blemish, born of a virgin. You say, well, I don't believe that. Well, you're lost then. If he's not a spotless lamb, you're just as lost and on your way to hell as you ever was. Praise God, it took Jesus. 
Listen to what he said. I love why the angel came with a good word for Mary here. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Which means Jehovah God saves. Jehovah God is our Savior. That's what Jesus means. He came to be that atoning sacrifice. I'm talking about, we always say, well, people say, well, uh, you know, the man upstairs, he's the reason for the season. No, friend, his name's Jesus. He's that spotless, virgin-born Lamb of God, amen, that taketh away the sins of the world. You're in Luke. Come forward with me. I've got to hurry. Come with me forward to Hebrews chapter number 9. Hebrews chapter 9. You remember how they had to come to the tabernacle. And they went to the door of the tabernacle and they, they killed the sacrifice. And then they came in and they laid everything out on the altar right there. And uh, listen at Hebrews chapter number 9 verse 24. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. You see that? You know, you know what Emmanuel means in Isaiah? Amen. God with us. God with us. Listen at this. Listen to this. To appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that He should offer Himself often. Those bullocks, those lambs, they had to, they only for a little while. Then they had to go offer again. But listen, nor yet that he should offer himself often as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, listen, once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Once at the end of the world He came to put away sin once and for all. All those sacrifices, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. All the lambs in the world couldn't pay. And, and Amen. Listen, I'll tell you something. Turn over my Bible. You just turn over one page to Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 3. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. Every year. Listen to this, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. I'll read that again, verse 4. It is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. It took the man. It took the God-man. It took the virgin-born Son of God to take away our sins. Amen. And to remove them as far as the east is from the west by His shed blood, by the shed blood of the darling Son of God. That's what Christmas is. You want to know what Christmas is? I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it ain't the Grinch that stole Christmas. Come on. It ain't Santa Claus. Christmas is Jesus. I mean that taketh away the sins of the world. What better gift could you receive than eternal life? You give me all the money in the world, but guess what? It's going to burn up with the rest of the world. If you gave me the finest house, if you said, Derek, the Biltmore house is yours, you can go live in it. What good would the world do me with leaving on my mind? Give me Jesus. Give me eternal life. Amen. Amen. That's, what, that's the gift that He gave. Amen. Amen. Look over here in verse, you're in chapter 10. Look at verse number 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God 
and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. Friend, you're free to make any choice you want. You can voluntarily accept the Lord Jesus Christ, be saved from your sins, and receive eternal life, and have your sins eternally put away. Or you can voluntarily say, no, thank you. What you're not free to do is to choose the consequences or the rewards of your decision. Amen. You have no control over that. Jesus said, when he comes, he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. Amen. Oh, but if you say no thank you to the grace of God, how shall, we ne how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? If we neglect this great salvation that God went to all the trouble, all those thousands of years, amen, prophesying about Jesus come through the sacrifices, through the prophets, through the Psalms. He came and was born of a virgin. He lived a sinless life according to the Scriptures. He died, was buried, and resurrected, and ascended back to heaven according to the Scriptures. He's coming again according to the Scriptures. Praise God. But if you say, no, thank you, I'll go my own way, I'll do my own thing, how much sore is the punishment going to be if you neglect this great salvation and trod underfoot the blood of the Son of Almighty God? Don't have to be that way. The Lord offers you a gift. He said, as many as the Father give unto me, I give unto them eternal life. I'm going to turn one more place and then I'm going to hush. Go backwards and go back to Romans. Romans chapter 10. Say, so he just preached out of Romans chapter 10 the other day. I don't remember which day it was, but it's been this last week sometime. Romans chapter 10. Listen to verse number 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Stop right there. All those sacrifices and everything, they couldn't pay for one sin. They could atone. They could appease God for just a little while. They could atone for it for a little while. And I wrote this down. Brother Jeff was teaching Sunday school this morning. He was talking about, if you wasn't here in Sunday school, God bless your heart, come to Sunday school. But he was talking about how that the ark was placed on that ox cart. And God said, no, no. The priests are going to carry it. The sanctified priests are going to carry that with those poles. That's why we put, he put those sockets on the side of it with those poles through it so the priest could bear that ark on their shoulder. But they said, we'll take a shortcut and we'll put it on an ox cart and we'll carry it. And I, he said this this morning in Sunday school and it just resonated with me. Listen to what, what Brother Jeff said. He said, God is not going to allow a beast to do only what a man can do. God's not going to allow, amen, listen, a lamb from just, just any old lamb from any old flock He's not going to allow a bullet to pay for our sin debt in full. It's impossible. The Bible said it's not possible that the bulls of, that the blood of bulls and of goats should, should pay for our sins. It took the virgin-born Son of Almighty God. I'm talking about the Christmas offering today. That offering is made for our sins. Sin's the problem. The world most, wants to make light of sin. Just like the folks that came to, somebody came to Bethlehem, as far as I know, it's just one person. Somebody came to Bethlehem last night to the, to the thing and wanted to know if they had a, a, a beer tent or somewhere they could get them some beer down there. Well, no, this ain't that kind of meat. The fool, I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, the fool makes a mockery at sin. Sure does. 